What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be about repairing and refinishing a front lip spoiler and a front bumper cover on a 2015 911 Turbo. First step is to get it in the building and get some slime put on it. So here we go. All right, so let me show you what I mean by slime. This is what I call slime. It's uh, This actually brand is made by Bad Monkey and it's a uh, aqua spray mask. And what this is basically is a film that you spray on the car and it dries to a non-tacky non film. Right, so as you can see or really as you can't really see it's a clear film you can kind of see it on the glass there it's a clear film that you spray on the vehicle that uh, protects it from overspray I masked off the front bumper because I'm gonna be working on the front bumper and I didn't want this stuff on it necessarily and after you're finished you wash it with water and the film turns into soap and just washes off just like soap and water it's an extra step I still put plastic on the vehicle but sometimes overspray can get up underneath the plastic, so this is a, an extra layer of protection from overspray. And on a car this nice, I always try to do the slime and also the plastic covering to protect from overspray. But just even sitting in the shop sometimes, you can get overspray on cars, so I wanna go through every step I can to prevent that. The next step now is to let this dry, and then I'll start taking the front bumper cover off. All right, so I was gonna make a video about how to take this front bumper off this 991 Turbo. But somebody already beat me to the punch. There is a very good video out there by Renline Incorporated. I'll put a link to the video maybe right there or maybe right there. If I can't figure out how to put it on the screen, I'll definitely put the link in the description. But this video actually tells you exactly how to pull the bumper off. It's pretty detailed. Um, I don't really want to duplicate that. So, But I, I, did, I did learn something in that video. Let me show you. So this is the toolkit that comes in these uh, 991s. I guess really any of the street cars and what it has in it is this tool here uh, I uh, I've never seen one of these before um, all the uh, I've worked on a lot of 991 GT3 cup cars and race cars mostly none of them had a toolkit in there but what this is this is a headlight tool headlight removal and installation tool pretty cool I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find one of these on Amazon or something and order it but uh yeah so I did learn something from that video so don't 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 be afraid to go check out videos on how to take so, something off of a vehicle even if you know how to do it and you've done it before somebody might know a trick that you don't know that being said I didn't make a detailed video about take it off just time-lapse but I'm gonna show you some other tricks that I may know about painting and stuff like that Alright, so the video I watched on YouTube that showed you how to take the bumper off, they tell you to disconnect these two air lines for this pneumatic splitter, but they don't really say how to undo them. So I had to kind of fight with them and I finally figured them out. I want to show you how it's done. Let me see if I can hold this camera and show you how it's done. I'll show you on this end. It's the same kind of connection. So basically, this is the pneumatic line, this is the fitting. If you this little there's a ring around here if you'll grab that ring and pull it just push it back that way push it back that way you can pull this apart and that's all it is and if you look down inside there there's little teeth and this actually releases the teeth so to put it back together 
all you do is put it in there and lock it in and it's done all right so we're going to be repainting this bumper and the main defect is i don't know if it's showing up on camera or not but you can see it's like peppered with little really small rock chips and there's a couple bigger ones that he has touched up but we're going to try to do minimalist approach to this we're going to sand it with 600 wet and try to knock some of this rock chips out and get it as smooth as possible without priming it and then i'll seal it white and base it out white and clear it and all of those really small rock chips should go away so the next step to this bumper is to get it wet sanded with 600. all right so we're going to be sending the porsche bumper with this 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper fold up into three parts like i just did there three equal parts one two three gives you three sides to sand on you can sand this side till the, the paper gets dull you can flip it over and then once this side gets dull you can unfold gives you a new side so it gives you three sides to sand with it also gives you something that's good hand size to do all your sanding with all right so when you're wet sanding a panel you can use a uh, a wash mitt or a sponge to help keep the panel wet while you're scuffing or sanding Take the 600 grit, and you don't want to apply pressure with your fingertips because it'll cut little finger grooves into the panel and that'll show up in the paint. So you want to use the palm of your hand, the flattest portion as you can. So you're going to also use the X pattern, just like you're doing when you're blocking. And what we're trying to achieve here is basically sand it down as smooth as possible, get through the rock chips without actually going through the clear coat and into the base. Um, if you do go to the base a little bit, that's fine. You're gonna to wanna to be careful on these edges, not to sand through the edge, because sometimes that can show up in the paint where you sand it through. So you wanna minimize sanding through your edges, minimize sanding through the base coat, and basically just sand an even layer off, making it as smooth as possible. So here we go, we're gonna start on that. Sanding it with 600 may not work for what I need to do. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So as I started sanding with 600, you can, hopefully it shows up on the video, you can start seeing these little black specks everywhere. And those are rock chips that are down to the plastic. And there's actually a lot more than initially thought. He had a lot more touched up and you couldn't hardly see it with the touch ups. Little gouges that are not gonna sand out in 600. And I think they'll show up when I repaint it, even if I seal it. So. What that leaves us doing now is me priming this whole bumper. So if that's the case, I mean, if I'm gonna prime the whole bumper, then I'm gonna sand it with something a little bit more aggressive than 600. How about 180? That'll work. We're gonna sand this thing with some 180 on a DA, get it all sanded down, all the rock chips will be gone, and at that point, we'll be putting primer on it. So here we go. so you can see I had to sand through all the way to the plastic to even come close to getting some of these rock chips to go away and that's fine if you're going to be priming like I said see how I sanded through the edge right here you would not want to do that if you were going to be finishing the sand in 600 um, and, and painting right over that even if you were sealing it because that might show up as a little ring right there but since I'm going to be priming it Going through the uh, paint layers down to the plastic is really not that big a deal. All right, we've got the bumper DA-180. Let me show you the spoiler, what we've got to do to it. All right, so this is the front lip spoiler. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of curb rash there. We're going to jump on this with some 180 and try to get this smoothed out as best as possible. I don't want to put filler in it, but I might have to put because these are some of these are pretty deep. But we're going to get this sanded smooth with 180. We've got a little bit on the other side, too. Let me show you. got really light scratches here that I'll be 180 and out also so we're going to 180 this a lot of this is really thin so the DA I'll hit the flat areas where I can but a lot of this is going to be hand sanding so I'm gonna get right on that now
All right, so I went over this a little bit with some 180, and these are pretty deep scratches. I mean, remember how I once told you don't sand raw plastic with 80 grit because it hairs it up? I guess this might be the exception to the rule because it's already haired up. And the 180 is going to take a long time to try to get these deep scratches out. So I'm going to jump on this spot right here with some 80 grit. Since it's already haired, I really can't make it hairier than it is. So, And what I mean by haired up, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bitty fiber sticking up. It's fibers of plastic, really. It's just little pieces of plastic sticking up. So... Since it's already haired up, we're going to jump on this with some 80 and see if we can make quick work of these deep scratches. All right, as you can tell, the 80 grit made light work of the deep scratches. There's still a couple small ones in there, but I'm going to go over this now with 180 grit. See if I can get those little furry. You can. It's not showing up on camera. Well, kind of it is, but it feels furry. It feels like there's uh, little pieces of plastic sticking up on end, like little hairs. So we're going to try to get that out with some 180, and I might have to go over it with maybe some 320. And I might even have to get the 600 wet back out and try to smooth it up. Because if you prime over that, you can prime it out, but it's kind of abusing the primer, putting too much primer on a panel. And that's never good to have too much film build on anything. So we're going to try to sand these out. Put some 180, 320, and then some 600 before we prime it. So here we go. All right, so we got all the DAing done. We're going to take the old piece of 180 grit DA paper, fold it over, make the sandpaper taco. We're going to go over all of the Spots we couldn't hit with the DA. All right, so I can see the comments now. Hey, you said not to sand with your fingertips. And I see you sanding with your fingertips on this chin spoiler. So... I'm sanding with my fingertips on that chin spoiler because it, on the, the small, the edge is that small and it's recessed, it's concaved. And if you use a flat palm and you sand over it, it doesn't sand down in the concave part. So you, it, on some occasions, you're going to have to use your fingertips. Yes, I am sanding with my fingertips on this chin spoiler because it's unavoidable. It's the only way to get down into the concave groove of the spoiler. But on a large flat area on the bumper, don't sand with your fingertips. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, if you have any more specific questions, leave a comment and I'll uh, answer as best I can. All right, so when we're priming this bumper, I'm gonna tape off this edge because it's not scuffed. It's just scuffed around the corner here. And even if I did scuff it with the red pad, I would still want to tape it off because if I prime down in here, I'm gonna have to scuff it again. So you basically have to scuff it twice and there's really no reason to put primer down here anyway. So I'm gonna tape off all the edges, stuff that I'm not gonna be priming and get primer on this. So here we go. Pearls of wisdom from an old dirty body man. If everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. All right, so I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit on the shorter side, so that's going to be about it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, hit the like button. And if you have anything that you want to ask me, leave a comment. I will answer you as soon as I can and to the best of my knowledge. Also, subscribe and share. Those things mean a lot to me. So stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be painting this bumper and then putting it back on the vehicle. Until then, we'll see you on the next one. See ya! It's gonna be a bit about it. It's gonna be a bit about. God, I can't say about. About.
about what am I can eat? I'm a comedian, Canadian. You're smart. Freak the bumper. Also, I must say also one more time. 